waking up the world to a sense of order. Prior to creation, the world was in chaos. God stepped in to establish a, a cosmos order. The duty to maintain the divine agenda was given to man. No one is more fitting in discharge of the divine minded than the close collaborator of God, the religious. Our role in the world is in a way collocated with God's task for the world. We are to be the perfect models of humanity and perfect example of the good news we bear. When the consecrated men and women establish harmony, peace and order in their various communities, the society will definitely be influenced positively. The consecrated people need to live a life of orderliness and always admonish people to walk towards harmony. The world was in chaos before the created act of God transformed chaos into orderliness. Christ's coming was to restore everything in him. Thus, following Christ's example, the consecrated men and women build communities that celebrate unity in diversity or the unity of difference. Order is established in the midst of varied men and women who live in a well-formed communities. Waking the world through communion. The consecrated men and women live a life of communion in imitation of the train God, dwelling in perfect love and unity. What unites the persons of the Godhead is far more than what differentiates them. Through this sense of communion, the consecrated men and women influence people and confront earthly divisions and rivalry by the love existing among them. The world not only sees the way the religious celebrate their happiness, but also the way they share their sorrows and pains. Waking the world through virtue based level. Jesus says, My Father keeps working and I walk. While God is known as Deus Creator, Creator God, humans are referred to as the home of Father, walking being. Hence, the vocation to walk is inherited from God, who fashioned the world and sustains it. He then charged humans to control his affairs and further his cause. In the view of St. Thomas Aquinas, man is a microcosm, minor mundus, miniature world, who realizes and defines himself through the medium of work. So the hidden potentials in him are developed through this means, leading him to the conceivable apex of his expansion. In their work, the consecrated men and women teach the world to shun idleness and laziness, reminding them of St. Paul's imperative that if anyone is unwilling to work, he should not eat. Just as St. James challenges everyone to display his faith through his work. Now, in the discharge of their work, the consecrated men and women encourage the world to apply virtue, for it will enable people to undertake their labor with dignity and self-respect. Virtue helps us to develop the inner disposition to always sit before us and consider above all the good. The formation of character becomes the sole interest of the agents who act and wills, while acting the virtuous person chooses to give the best of himself, tilting always towards the good. Any work that does not give glory to God nor enhance human existence is devoid of the virtue. As a consecrated men and women, seizing their work with virtue, the world learns from them in many ways. Now, we talk about waking the world by being involved, but not of the world. The best way of setting an example is by being involved in the world's affairs. Consecrated men and women don't need to be passive observers, but active or proactive. 
If Mary was passive, she would not have known when the wine finished at Cana's wedding. John 2, 1 to 12. She was very much involved in the happenings. However, for religious to teach by example, they have to take the professional positions and run them well. However, there might be calumnies, but there will also be fruits. After all, Christ too was canonized. For religious to take these positions, there is need for the equipment of their members, morally and professionally, in preparation for an invaluable performance. When the consecrated are thus equipped, their level of performance will influence and correct the errors of individual workers. The world needs this, and the consecrated must rise to the challenge. Waking the world to the reality of suffering for the good. The Lord Jesus talks about the blessedness of the poor in spirit, and of those who hunger for righteousness' sake and of those persecuted and revived. He says their reward is great. The world is filled with people who desire pleasure and hate any form of discomfort. They believe that the Lord is their shepherd and they shall not want. Forgetting that the same psalmist noted that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because you are there with your crook and your staff. Hence, it is the task of the consecrated men and women to remind the world that there is no crown without a cross and no pleasure without some discomfort. The close following of Jesus helps the consecrated men and women to understand the importance of enduring pain in view of a great reward. Through their endurance, the world learns the possibility of enduring.